Now the majority of people use their Raspberry Pis without a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse permanently attached to it. Of course it was attached at some point when they were doing the setup, but after that it's just sitting in the corner doing whatever job you've designed it to do. Of course there are people who do use it with a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor permanently connected to it and that's absolutely fine, but the majority use it in this headless setup. Now to connect remotely to a Raspberry Pi, there are various solutions that you can use. Secure Shell, for example, VNC, Microsoft's Remote Desktop Protocol, even the X11 Protocol itself. And there's all different ways in which you can connect to your Raspberry Pi. Now the Raspberry Pi Foundation have launched a new service that allows you to connect to your Raspberry Pi from anywhere in the world. That means you can connect to it while you're in your a house in your home office. You can also connect to it when you're on the other side of the world and connect to it over your internet connection and get access to your Raspberry Pi. So in this video I want to look at this new service that has been launched, see how you set it up, see how it works, talk about some of the security implications uh, and of course demo the whole thing as we're going along. So if you want to find out more please let me explain. Okay, so this new technology which you access by going to connect.raspberrypi.com is a service that allows you to connect to your Raspberry Pi using your web browser from anywhere in the world. And once you're connected with the web browser, you get a copy of the desktop shown on your web browser using VNC, using some clever WebRTC protocols. Now what this basically means is that you now have full access to your Raspberry Pi wherever you are. If it's only one meter away from you or if it's thousands of kilometers away from you. Now to set it up is quite simple. You need to be running a Raspberry Pi which has Wayland built into it. So at the moment that means a 64-bit version of the latest Raspberry Pi OS on a Raspberry Pi 4, a Raspberry Pi 400 or a Raspberry Pi 5. You then do the normal sudo apt update sudo app upgrade to make sure all your files and everything's up to date and then you do the sudo apt to install the uh, rpi connect client after that you need to reboot your raspberry pi once the client is installed you need to go over to id.raspberrypi.com and make sure you have a raspberry pi id if you don't have one register with an email address password and you know the drill and then after that you go to connect.raspberrypi.com Dot com and there you can add devices so you can then authorize a device you've got access to the desktop you need uh, VNC running at this point or a monitor and a keyboard on it at this point you authorize this device to be connected to your account and once you've done that you're then able to open a web browser from wherever you are click connect and it will bring up the desktop in your web browser now there are two modes of connection. The most likely one is you get a peer-to-peer -peer connection, which means your web browser is talking directly to your Raspberry Pi using the clever technology that exists in a WebRTC. It's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. And if you go up to that little padlock symbol next to the disconnect uh, button there, it will tell you what type of connection you're using. Now, as I say, most of the time it's gonna be peer-to-peer. -peer. Now, there are occasions when it has to go through the relay server that's run by Raspberry Pi itself. That's in the UK. There's only one of them, which means if it does end up using that, then it, there could be quite a lot of lag. Now, I've tried all kinds of different things inside my house, outside the house, using a VPN, using two different internet service providers, using mobile, whatever I was doing, I could not get it to connect to Raspberry Pi's relay server. It just worked directly peer to peer. So I don't know what exactly needs to happen to kick in that particular scenario, but if it does, you will get all your traffic routed through the UK. Now the Raspberry Pi Foundation say they want to keep this service free, particularly when it's peer to peer, if they find a lot of people are using the relay server, then it looks like they're gonna to have to support that infrastructure cost. So maybe there's going to be uh, some subscription model or something if you use that. But peer to peer, they say they wanna keep it free because all their server does really is just arrange the handshaking, the connection bit, and that's pretty simple. And then all the data doesn't go through their server, they go, it goes peer to peer. Now, one other thing to note is this only works if you have auto login enabled for the desktop. And this is because the RPI Connect service only runs once you log in to the desktop. So you need to be aware of that and then decide accordingly. Now, let's just talk about the security concerns for a moment. One, of course, is that once you have a service that allows you to connect to your Raspberry Pi anywhere in the world, then theoretically, 
that could mean that anyone could access your Raspberry Pi from anywhere in the world. Now, maybe accessing your Raspberry Pi itself isn't the end of the world because you probably don't have very much on there. But of course, once they're in your network, then from there, they can hop onto other machines in your network, your main PC, whatever, and could do all kinds of damage. Now, that will likely happen for one of two reasons. One is if your account gets compromised. So if you log in with your email address and your password is, you know, password, then you can expect that that account would get hacked and then people can access your uh, your Raspberry Pi. Now, the way around that, of course, is to use a unique strong password, but also to enable two-factor authentication. And that way you can't just get in if someone discovers your password, they still have to use that second step to get access to it using, you know, the normal things with the codes from your phone and all that kind of stuff. Now, the second way it could happen is if the Raspberry Pi service itself gets hacked. Now, this has happened in the past. Other services that allow remote connection to something, whether that's a desktop, whether that's a network attached uh, storage, whatever it is, those services do come under attack. And when vulnerabilities are found, they can get broken into. So you have to be aware of that. Now, to get around that or to help in that, the Raspberry Pi Foundation send out an email. Every time your account logs in, then you get a fresh email. So you will know whether someone's gained access to your account because the uh, email comes up and says someone's just logged into your account. So there's balances here. You have to think about it. For the moment, I think it's a really good idea. Uh, I'm using it now rather than using VNC, setting that up on the uh, server. I'm just going to, I just go to the web browser and I just connect to it and it's pretty good. W let's just hope it remains secure. There's no reason to think it won't, but then again, you know, anything is vulnerable ultimately. Uh, now, of course, where the hackers are going to spend time just trying to get access to Raspberry Pis and invest the time to actually hack that service, well, who knows? But we'll wait and see what happens. But definitely install um, two-factor, enable two-factor authentication because that's certainly the first step. So it's currently in beta. Go over to connect.raspberrypi.com. Give it a try. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below about how it works for you and uh, whether you find it useful. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>